best virtual college fair. Um, we are super excited. Uh, the, the five of us are so excited to be able to share our programs with you uh, today. We have five different programs that are here to share some information with you. Uh, Bethesda College for Applied Learning. Uh, we have uh, Elmhurst Learning and Success Academy, or ELSA. Uh, Pace at National Lewis. RISE, the Road to Independent Living, Spiritual Formation and Employment uh, program at Judson University and Shepherds College. Um, all of these uh, different programs are designed for students uh, with uh, various disabilities, and we are so excited to share the information with you. Um, my name is Drew Burles. I'm the assistant director for the RISE program. Um, I'm here joined with our uh, program director, Janine Vargas, who will be sharing the uh, presentation with you today. But uh, before we get started, I just wanted to um, give you a little bit of, of how today's going to go and um, just uh, a little bit of ground rules for our virtual uh, college fair. And so um, what I would encourage you to do is if your uh, view is on gallery view, I would encourage you to put it on speaker view. Uh, that would make sure that the only person on the screen is the one who is giving the presentation. Um, if you, uh, your mics should be muted uh, as you're coming into the room. And so we would ask that you keep those mics muted until uh, we reach our Q&A portion. Um, we will have a, a, a portion at the end of the uh, presentation where you will be able to ask some questions. And so you can feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions at that time. You can also ask questions in the chat. Um, I'm gonna be monitoring those and facilitating our Q&A time. Uh, but uh, during the presentations, we ask just so that we keep the background noise uh, down. If you could keep your mics muted, that'd be great. Um, and then, yeah, lastly, we're gonna have a Q&A at the end of all five of these presentations. And so if you have those questions, you can put them in the chat. I'll try and get to all of the ones that go in through there. Um, but if you would like to, to ask your question um, verbally, you can use the reaction tool um, on the, the Zoom features and you can raise your hand. I'll be able to see them and uh, I'll, I'll call on you to ask some, some questions. Um, somebody was saying, will the slides be, be shared uh, by the viewers via email after the presentations? I'll make sure that we get all the contact information for um, everybody, our uh, Zoom call is being recorded, and so we are planning on um, posting this in uh, some different spots, and so you'll be able to see it uh, there as well. Awesome. So we are uh, going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we're just going alphabetically uh, for tonight, and so the first up is going to be uh, Bethesda College for Applied Learning. And so I will put uh, Kira on the screen. Awesome. Yay! <laughs> and we can go ahead and get started whenever you are ready, Kira. All right, I'm ready if you want to put my slides up. Awesome. So thank you guys so much for coming tonight. Um, I'm not sure what the weather is like by you, but we're getting quite a few storms here. Um, my name is Dr. Kira Collins, and I am up by Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'm here to represent um, Bethesda College at Concordia University, Wisconsin. Um, I am the assistant director as well as the director of enrollment. Um, and so, Drew, if you can go to the next slide, please. Awesome, these are just some pictures of students that we have. Um, and the biggest motto and thing that we really like to focus on is Bethesda is a partnership with Concordia University. So our Bethesda students are Concordia students. Um, everything is the same, except for a little difference in the coursework that the students take. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, at Concordia, um, it's really neat. Um, the whole campus is actually connected in underground tunnels. Um, so as a student living on campus, you actually never have to go outside. It's about, um, about three to four miles of underground tunnels. So you will see students in the winter going to school in shorts and flip flops. Um, those are students that live on campus, which is really cool. Um, also with the tunnels, it's really nice. It is an additional safety measure. Um, all tunnels have cameras in them as well as phones. And so students, if you get lost or you're unsure, um, all you need to do is pick up a phone and it goes right to campus safety and they are able to come and assist you as well. Um, two other things with Concordia at, or Bethesda at Concordia, um, Concordia University campus is actually the safest campus, um, in the state of Wisconsin, and it's the second safest, uh, campus in the nation. Um, so those are a couple other pieces, um, when you're thinking of the college that's right for you and what you are comfortable with, um, those are some things for you to consider. Okay, go ahead, Drew. 
Um, a little bit of our demographics or kind of uh, the students. These are all based on the students that just finished this past year. Um, we had seven female students and two male students. Um, we are a smaller program. We accept 12 students every year. Um, so if you're interested, it's important that you get that in right away. Um, we have students that come from a wide range of disabilities. Um, primarily, we work with students who have intellectual or developmental disabilities. However, that's not um, the only disabilities that we work with. So um, the, this past year, we had students with, um, like I said, intellectual delays and developmental delays. Um, learning disabilities, epilepsy, um, orthopedic and physical impairments, um, speech disabilities, um, autism spectrum disorder, um, emotional behavior disabilities, and Down syndrome. Um, and usually students in our program um, enroll between 18 and 26 years old. So some students uh, have a really great transition program at their school, and we really encourage them to continue with that if that's what they would like, while other students are ready and are done with high school at the age of 18. Um, and whether they're, they're leaving with a certificate of completion or a diploma um, we do accept students both ways um, a little bit about concordia um, as, the, as when we left in the spring um, there was about 7400 full-time students um, a little bit more males than females and big majors at the school are health professions it's within this mm -hmm. this is the biggest the college but they have like a bethesda they um business and education um there's also a pretty big faith component with concordia as well okay go ahead drew thank you um bethesda college is really unique in that we only have four professional staff that work for the college um the rest of our staff which is over 30 um stu people are all led by students and so what's really important with bethesda is that is all the peer supports that we hire um, and so as a student at Bethesda College, you're supported by Concordia students. So um, you don't have us as professional staffs, you know, going around with you. You're able to make those relationships. And really what we see is a lot of friendships um, with Concordia students as well. So we provide life skill and job skills coaches. Um, we provide student instructors to help you with your Concordia University courses that you take. Um, we do nightly check-ins, Sunday night check-ins. Um, you have your own resident assistant um, that lives in the dorm with you, um, as well as peer advisors. Go ahead, Drew. Um, there's really four pieces of Bethesda College, and it's really broken down into academics, adult living skills, campus and community life, and career prep and internships. Um, and I'll just briefly touch on those since I'm very limited on my time. Go ahead, Drew. Academics, um, when we talk about academics, really what you need to realize is you're taking um, about 11 to 12 courses each semester. You have a combination of Bethesda courses that you take, um, which really focus on how to um, grow along with your disability, um, as well as Concordia courses that are taken for audit. And the reason they're taken for audit, um, anywhere from about one to four classes you can take, um, they're taken for audit because you are able to have a student instructor, which means that the coursework can be modified and adapted. Um, in order to receive credit for a college class, the only um, accommodation that you can have is extended time on testing and note taking. Um, and so what we offer students is above and beyond that, which is why our students take them um, for audit. We also offer tutoring for students as well. Um, you have a study lab time where you can get help with your homework as well because you are in college and you will definitely have homework. Go ahead, Drew. Um, this is just some differences looking for first year and second year courses um, that are Bethesda courses that I touched on. So um, spiritual and personal development, which are the two courses that I teach. Um, for the question on why only two accommodations, um, those accommodations are for Concordia University students um, in order to get credit for a Concordia class. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. Um, for Bethesda students, though, you would have as many accommodations as you need. And often what we find is, um, you know, we sit down with the professor and the student instructor and you as a student and we talk through what you're comfortable with um, and what your workload could be. So that was a really great question. Um, yes, there are many more um, for the question that we have many many more um, accommodations that you can have, okay? Um, then you can just see that we have study lab and portfolio. Um, there is a community service that students are required to do and we do help you with that. Um, there is a peers speech group. So there is um, speech groups to go to as well. And so you have, you really focuses on those communication skills socially, um, as well as a guided study, which is kind of uh, goes along with the internship that you have. Go ahead, Drew. 
adult living skills. Um, we really work on budgeting and money management, wellness, personal care, personal hygiene, independent living. Um, you know, how do you do your chores? What does that look like? Um, and then organization and time management. So really looking at, do you work best on a schedule or how do you work best? Go ahead, Drew. Um, campus and community life is a huge part of our program. And so like I mentioned, um, the only difference between a Bethesda student and a Concordia student is really going to be the courses that you take. Every other piece of campus and community life um, you are a part of. So whether it is athletics that you wanna participate in, clubs, um, social events, um, field trips on the weekends, retreats on the weekends, um, students are always invited and encouraged to participate in that. Um, there is a activity provided every night as well um, that students are able to participate in. Um, there are also life skills coaches that will come to the dorm and help you as well. And there's really a big piece of um, the friendship and social skills building that really comes with living in the dorms. And there was a question I saw about religion. Um, Concordia and Bethesda are both um, related, are both Lutheran entities. And so Concordia is a Lutheran school. However, the way that I see that religion is um, focused on at Concordia really is on the way, um, the golden rule, you know, treating others the way you would like to be treated. Um, and that's how I see it, is I see it in the kindness um, that all students and staff at Bethesda and Concordia University, how they treat each other. Um, if you're interested, it is not mandatory, but there is chapel every day from 9.30 to 10. There are religious um, groups that you can join that, like I said, can you uh, do retreats on the weekends as well? So that's another piece I'd be more than happy to talk about at another time. Go ahead, Drew. Um, career prep, these are just some things. Um, so really career prep is the class that's gonna go along with your internship. Um, all of the um, Looks like we're having some difficulty with Kira. <clears throat> um, Kira, if you can hear us. All right, it looks like uh, we were having some issues with Kira. I think we will need to, Kira, can you hear us? Okay. I think what we will need to do is uh, move forward into the next presentation. And uh, if you have any specific questions about Bethesda, uh, you can call, uh, you can um, email Kira directly. I will have her contact information uh, up at the end of our presentations. And so uh, we'll be able to give a little bit more information that way. Uh, but we will go ahead and move forward. And uh, I think we'll have to move on to Elsa. So we will move into uh, Elmhurst College and we'll just move with the next presentation. All right, Tim, can you hear me? How are we doing? Okay, so Hello, I think everybody. Uh, we will, oh. um, if Kira- Can you hear me? Back. Can you hear me, Drew? I can hear you now. I think we're having some technical difficulties. Okay, we'll just have to move on um, with the next presentation here. All right, sorry everybody. Um, Kara is great to talk to. <laughs> Hopefully, we can we can circle back to that. My name is uh, Tim Alberg. I am the assistant director of admission for Elmhurst College. Uh, I'm the fine arts admission counselor, and I'm also the counselor for the ELSA program, the Elmhurst Learning and Success Academy at Elmhurst College. And in just about three weeks, we're actually going to become Elmhurst University. So we're really excited. As of July 1st, it's going to be our new name. So go ahead, Drew. 
we were joking in the planning for this that we keep needing to make beeping sounds for him for those of you who know what film strips are. <laughs> so the Elmhurst Learning and Success Academy is a four year post-secondary certificate program for young adults uh, with differing abilities from the ages of 18 to 28. We focus on those three areas you see there, academics, work experience, and independent living skills, and social and recreational experience. Prospective students for us are, like I said, between the ages of 18 and 28. They have completed high school, either with a diploma or certificate of completion. They're interested in developing their skills in functional literacy, technology, and uh, uh, interest and capacity for employment and independent living. And we need to have sufficient, sufficient emotional skills and capacity for independence. We want to be able to read and write and do math and comprehend reading at at least a third grade level. And of course, we like that our students enjoy strong family support of our program objectives. So the big to do with us, um, Elmhurst is a western suburb of Chicago. We're about 16 miles straight out, um, not too far from O'Hare. Uh, but our big to do with the program is our academics. So we're really working on increasing students literacy our technical skills with computers, writing capacity, math. Um, we really like the idea of reading for pleasure, which is becoming a lost love amongst many of my students at my college and whether they like it or not, we're working on it. Um, all of our classes are team taught by ELSA faculty and Elmhurst College students. Uh, not unlike Bethesda, some of our secret sauce is the participation of students in our program. We do have a speech pathology program, a special Olympics program, psychology, nursing, and an occupational therapy master's program. All of those students uh, enjoy working with us in a lot of different capacities. Um, we also allow our students to take traditional Elmhurst College courses. We call those also electives. Um, it's a way to kind of specialize uh, and, and follow a particular interest they may have. Uh, for example, one of my recent alum got a certificate in graphic design, so he took several art and graphic design courses at his time in Elmhurst College while doing the program. We also have the ELSA Plus program, which is a pathway for ELSA students to move uh, into a degree program. And so if they're taking also electives, typically they take those as a pass, no pass for non-credit. But if they uh, um, have the skills and the, and the confidence, it's possible to take those electives for credit and start building up some credits and potentially move over to a degree program, or at the very least take those credits with them to a community college later. And then we have the Advantage program, which is for students who are degree seeking students who might need a little bit more support than what's typically available so they might take the class in ELSA on the side and that might be an intro to college life or a social communications course or something along those lines to kind of help them uh, uh, see their see the way and yes ELSA students do commute and live on campus so we'll get to that in a second go ahead Drew um, the big thing for us in the end is career exploration. So yeah, we wanna do academics. We really wanna have the college experience. I'll talk more about that as we go. But we really want to explore employment interests, abilities and opportunities and gain hands-on experience both on and off campus. We really work on internships. Most of our students do multiple internships throughout their years in the program. Uh, typically three or four, sometimes four or five. A lot of them get jobs on campus while they're in the program, not unlike any other college student that we have. And a big focus of the career track in the program is to not only have the experiences, but also learn how to seek out and apply jobs. We have classes in interviewing, we have classes in resume writing, and we, we work really hard on the soft skills. Go ahead, Drew. The social recreational experience is what makes it fun. Elmhurst College is a liberal arts college. We have about 3,400 students. We're in the western suburbs. We do have residence halls. We do have a little bit of Greek life. And we have you know, anywhere from 60 to 100 clubs and organizations, depending on the year. And our students are encouraged, and in fact required, to join at least one club while they're there. And they're usually required in their first year or two to attend three to four three to five activities per week so that they're getting engaged with campus life and meeting people and getting out there. And most of my students will tell you that they have friends in the program and across the college. So uh, we really like to foster um, the, the, the peers uh, interaction. There's a lot of clubs, Master Chief. I'm glad the, the video game character is joining us today. Um, everything from Best Buddies, Special Olympics, to uh, there's a radio station, there's a Relay for Life, there's Habitat for Humanity, there's Asian Club. There's lots and lots and lots of clubs and things to, to, to enjoy on campus. Go ahead, Drew. The residence hall is pretty great. Um, we have single or double, double room options. You get meal plans to choose from 
three different ways to go with that. It's the best way to have easy access to campus and activities and all those kinds of things um, and roommates and have the whole college experience. We do ask that students who live on campus um, do have a life coach that we will help hire the parents do pay the life coach 15 bucks an hour and that's usually going to be another student who works uh, with uh, all kinds of things anything from executive functioning skills to working on uh, organizing our planner to learning how to use the laundry or trying to find where the video game club is or whatever club you want to join go ahead drew so admission, this is kind of our process as it is. Um, we want a complete application form, a student essay. We do have letter of recommendation forms, uh, one from a parent, two from teachers and counselors. Uh, for this fall, we're waiving that requirement. We only want one letter right now, but we're still accepting applications for this fall. Um, we do want to see tr official high school tr transcripts. Uh, we want to see your latest, greatest IEP and psych eval. If you can't get a, a current psych eval because of the uh, the issue going on, we will look at an older one. Um, you know, and the deadlines are, are typically we like to see things early in the year, um, but we're still accepting applications. Um, spring term, we do occasionally start spring students. We want to see an application by the end of November. And if you are interested in living on campus, uh, there is a second screening after the admission interview, um, a housing screening with our staff and one of our staff psychologists. And currently, right now, we have about 47 students in the program, not counting those who are coming in. Go ahead, Drew. So how much does it all cost? Um, I wish I could say it was free, but right now the, the full-time tuition is about $17,412 per semester. So we're looking at an annual of about $34,824. Um, summer term and J term, uh, J, J term means January term, are included as part of a full-time tuition and so are textbooks. We do have a part-time tuition too, which runs about 914 per semester, and a typical part-time student runs seven to eight semester hours, or typically about 7,312 bucks a semester. Room and board, that's an average cost based on a middle meal plan and so forth, can run about $10,752. Mm -hmm. And somebody asked about life coaching, we usually recommend three to five hours per week, um, depending on the student's needs. Go ahead, Drew. So that's all our contact information. Grab a, grab a picture or a screenshot, depending on your device. Drew is gonna provide all that, I think, or at least my contact info, which is the, which is the quickest way, alberg t at elmhurst.edu, or give me a call. Um, we do have ADA rooms um, in, in some of our campus buildings, but uh, I am available. I am on the office now twice a week. We are doing uh, two-person campus uh, visits at this point, so feel free to, to uh, uh, get in touch with me. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Tim. Um, <clears throat> uh, we, I will have your contact information up on our last slide while we're going through our Q&A section. Uh, up next, we do have our uh, PACE program at uh, National Lewis University. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Drew. Hel Hello, my name is Elizabeth Potter. I'm the Outreach Development Specialist at PACE at National Lewis University. And so while you've heard about some two really great programs and we have many things that are similar, what I'd like to do is point out perhaps what the differences are. And so while PACE teaches life, it's life in the city. So whether it's Chicago or any other big city, really all of the skills that, are, that we provide are for students to be able with nobody else around to be able to make decisions throughout their life that are gonna allow them to continue to thrive. And so, Drew, let's go to the next slide. So what does PACE stand for? It is Path to Academics, Community, and Employment. And so while there may be quite a few programs now, or certainly more than a few, uh, we started in 1986 for one of the longest standing programs. And back in the 80s, there were not very many programs like ours. And so at that time, families came to what, was, what we were then called as the College of Education and asked for us to create a program for, for their children. For, they saw their friends going to college, they saw their siblings going to college, and they wanted the opportunity to have the same experience. And so out of that request, we've created our three-year residential post-secondary college experience certificate program. 
That's a mouthful. So it's a three-year program. So we ask our families when they take a look at PACE as that next step towards independence to really look at it as a whole. So as opposed to going to college and doing a semester or doing a year, we request our families to make the commitment for three years for them to be, for us to provide the environment, the arena for the students to be able to have those skills necessary to live independently. It's residential based. So residential is required. Our students um, stay in adult living apartments in Lincoln Park. Um, and I have a slide on that I'll show you a little bit later. It's a college experience. So everything that we go to college for, we go for the relationships, we go for um, the skills necessary to be able to get a job and to be able to have all of those functioning uh, experiences to be able to make those decisions as we go through life. I'm not going to get into these in detail tonight. Um, however, I do want to let you know once they've completed the program. So once students have graduated from the three-year certificate, we do have two additional programs called Pace Ahead and Pace Beyond where students, they don't age out of it. Like life continues to happen. Perhaps if they get unemployed or they're looking for advancement at work, they can continue to reach out to us and utilize our services on an as need basis. So who are our students? So you've heard from the first two programs, they have the opportunity to get college credit. Our, our program is not designed for that student. So our students would have difficulty navigating standard college curriculum. So our curriculum does not include biology or, or uh, chemistry or English 101. Those are not the type of classes that we offer. Um, however, our students are incredibly motivated to live independently. Like across the board, that's what they want. They wanna be able to live on their own. And so we don't have a minimum assessment score or a requirement Requirement that we're looking inside of the admissions paperwork. What we're looking for is a family and student who is committed to living on their own and has the maturity to understand um, what's required. And so, yes, Master Chef, we absolutely teach life skills. So think of it as a life college. I'll share with you that a little bit ahead. The average age of our students is between 18 and 28. Drew, if we can go to the next slide. All right, so this is just an idea. So touching on Master Chief, what you were saying, we have four major com components in our arena. It's the functional academics, that's money management. How do you live on a budget? So if you purchase, uh, you know, three jugs of Gatorade uh, and then that's all you have for lunch, what are the consequences of that? Employment. So by the end of the program, our students will have over a thousand work experience hours um, and they interview for those internships within the second week of classes. Independent living skills, so they live with us, so we do have independent living skills instructors that come for uh, three hours to the student apartments. Um, right now, I think we have a question about students and teachers. So right now we have um, 10 resident life advisors, as well as an additional 10, uh, 10 staff, uh, full-time staff members um, that support the students, and we have 40 students within the program. We accept for students only one time per year and that's in the fall. And so they start as a cohort group and we accept historically uh, between 15 and 17 students per year. So there's also the social skills. So how do you navigate when you, how you talk to your boss is different than how you talk to your teacher is different how you mm -hmm. talk to your mom. And so we are providing not only the oh, inside yeah. of the functional yeah. academic, uh, not only the functional academic piece, um, I lost my train of thought on there, um, about the social skills of those conversations of what do you do with a girlfriend and what are the things that you talk about to um, all of the other things that involve you as well. So if you can go to the next slide. And their peer mentors at the dorm. Um, we don't have peer, more into, men, peer mentors at the dorm. We do have student ambassadors, which are our second and third year students that have to interview that are students within the program. Uh, and we do participate in bus buddies as well. And so we've been around a long time. So 1986, as I shared with you earlier. So this is just an idea of some of our partnership sites. So during the interview process, we would find out what are you interested in? Where have you interned at? Where are you looking at long-term from employment? And then we will look to see if we have an internship site already existing within that industry. If we don't, then we can certainly reach out to them, but then we'll find something compatible. Um, so it's, um, 
it's not bus buddies, best buddies. And so it's a program where college students are able to um, pair up with students within our programs to be able to, I uh, got it, okay, okay, to be able to really go through life together and what is college like? All right, uh, all right Drew, let's go to the next one. So I would normally play this slide for you. And so this will certainly be available for everyone to view it after to tonight. But I just wanted to give you one idea. These, this is um, just some of our students. Yes, we do have bilingual students. We, this is just some of our students who they've gotten employment. They've been working for many, many years. So not just immediately after graduation, um, as many of our students are working by the time they hit their second year um, within the program. These are two stories of students that have graduated over 10 and 18 years and they're still employed at their same employer and so that'll be available to you after we post this video. Drew let's go to the next slide. Yeah, I, you know, what's a typical student? I, I, we don't have a typical student, so it's certainly a range. So whether it is um, whether they're autistic or they have intellectual disabilities or executive functioning. So we don't have necessarily a typical profile. Drew, can you go one back one slide? Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Um, I just want to touch on it quickly. So we, I mentioned to you that we do, our, we are residential based and our students live in um, adult living apartments in Lincoln Park at 1237 West Fullerton. It's called ION, I-O-N. You certainly can jump on their website to take a look at it. But this gives you an idea. Everything is inclusive. So it includes the health, the health facilities. Um, they are four bedroom apartments and there's uh, one, each student has their own room um, and it's two bedroom, uh, two bathrooms, excuse me. So four bedrooms, two bathrooms, um, and we occupy one floor of the building. So all of our students are on one wing, excuse me, of the building with our resident life advisors. So really, if you've ever been to Lincoln Park, it really is a hustle bustle, vibrant neighborhood for our students to be able to mingle with um, uh, many different types of uh, individuals that live there. Okay, so let's fast forward. What is all of that? Uh, what does all of it cost? And so the next slide is that. And so we are, our academic year follows the National Lewis, since we are National Lewis University, their catalog. We go to school fall, winter, and spring. And so we um, are on break for the summertime. This is our tuition from last year. So I just want you to be aware of that. We have not made a decision with everything that has been happening in this world. Lately, uh, National Lewis has not made a decision on tuition as of yet, but last year, our program fees and tuition was 26,400. And then room and board, as well as meals, is 16,600. And so that was what the average was for last year. In terms of financial assistance, we are a comprehensive transition program. So our families are uh, able to apply for the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. If they qualify, they can use the Pell Grant as well as any of the other scholarships. We do have internal scholarships available as well as other options would be um, 529 or ABLE plans can be applied to the program, monthly payment plans, and families are able to take a look at alternative educational loans. Drew, the next slide. Uh, we had a question on, do we accept students who need one-on-one -on -one help for all daily living activities? No, what we're looking for is somebody who is independent and not looking for one-on-one -on -one support. So what is our admissions process? Well, it really starts today. And so that is with the program interview uh, overview. Like, who are we? What are we about? Who are our students? The next step would be for you to schedule and reach out to me for a personal one-on-one -on -one to have your particular questions answered. If we feel that it's a good fit for each other, then you, I would uh, send you the application and you would uh, submit your supporting material. I would submit for our leadership committee for them to be able to review. We would then interview um, the student as well as the family. Our interview process typically, you, in the past, used to take three to four months. We realized that's a really long time to wait. And so we have expedited that. And so now our acceptance process is between four to six weeks. 
And again, like Tim had mentioned, we normally don't accept students by this point since we have locked into our lease um, for our residential piece. So typically students would be on waiting lists for this coming up fall. However, we do have room for a few more students um, this year um, to be able to do that before we sign that lease. And of course, we are accepting for fall 2021 um, to begin that process as well. And so our information will be available. Thank you for your time uh, and learning about the program. And my information will be available at the end of our time together tonight. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Uh, next up, we will go on to uh, Shepherd's College. And so Eric, if you would. Oh, I'm sorry. We're at the RISE, RISE program. I need to learn how to uh, go alphabetically. Sorry about that. Janine Vargas. If you would please uh, tell us a little bit about the RISE program. Thank you, Drew. And I can't wait to hear Shepard's presentation. Uh, my name is Janine Vargas, and I am the RISE program director. I'm also the ADA compliance officer for the campus. Um, as many have shared, there are uh, phenomenal programs here in the presentations, and we have many similar traits with the other programs. We are also a little bit different. And so um, as I go through the presentation, I'll talk about some of our subtleties as well. Uh, the RISE program was founded in 2016. We're a fairly new program and we're located in Judson University uh, on the campus in Elgin, Illinois, along the beautiful Fox River. The Judson University community is a small community. There are 1200 students um, enrolled in the program and uh, there are approximately 23 RISE students uh, enrolled in our program. Now the purpose of our program is providing students with a college experience in a Christian environment and to prepare them for independent living and competitive employment. Uh, the acronym of RISE stands for the Road to Independent Living, Spiritual Formation, and Employment. Those are our three pillars to our program. Our school year follows the Judson University traditional program as well. And so we begin each year in the fall, though we have two semesters, fall and spring. And they are cohort uh, classes. There are 12 students um, in our cohort. We offer a two-year program, so students receive a certificate in liberal arts uh, with a subject area concentration. The students are not earning credits uh, in their coursework, but will receive a certificate. Uh, students are required to have a high school diploma, um, be between the ages of 18 and 25. And um, as with other students, many of our students come to us after they've completed their transition program, but many come right after high school as well. And we ask that our, stu our students possess a desire to live on campus because our RISE students live in freshman dorms alongside the traditional students. They have the opportunity to participate in all activities available to all the college students on Judson's campus, which includes choir, theater productions, uh, ensembles, uh, assistant managers for teams, uh, pep squad, all those activities. There are many, many clubs um, available for them. This past year, we also piloted a year three program where students experienced apartment living on our campus. They have access to participate in all the activities and clubs on campus. They have the security of being in a familiar environment, and they also know all the resources that are available to them. Now, all our students take RISE courses, but in the second semester, through their fourth semester, they also take an elective class in their area of concentration for audit. These students also participate in on-campus intern on internships and then off-campus internships in their second and third semesters. We utilize Uber for their transportation and all our students are accompanied by vocational advisors. We've had great partnerships with departments on Judson's campus and our students have had a myriad of experiences working in the library, in food service, with our plant operations, in the business office, in our school of education. And off campus, we've had great partnerships with the Gail Borden Library in Elgin, uh, Sherman Hospital, the Elgin Museum, the Boys and Girls Clubs. So our students do get a various uh, variety of different opportunities and internships. There are four categories uh, to our RISE courses. 
Um, and these courses, the students focus on developing those specific skills. Independent living, very, very important. Students will learn about cooking, uh, relational dynamics, how to get along with each other, how to get along with those that you are not uh, familiar with, uh, learn about budget and financing, interpersonal communications. In our professional skills, students learn about workplace introductions, career shadowing, vocational development, and then their internships. In person center planning, very important. They're exploring the career options that are out there. They're also doing a lot of self-discovery. And that's an opportunity that you have in college is uh, now that you're on your own, breaking away from the, the typical, you can discover things about yourself. And in our last semester, students uh, work on that transition to independence once they finish our program. And finally, health and wellness courses that look into uh, healthy tr nutrition and exercise. In addition to our courses, we also provide a weight training and cardio class, which is taught by a personal trainer two times a week that helps our students develop safe um, fitness activities. In addition to academics, our students can volunteer in service projects that are available each semester. And since spiritual formation is a key component it to our program. Rice students participate in chapel. We offer chapel Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of each week, which is a fully integrated campus event. Students look forward to chapel. They're student-led live bands. The messages that are given by many guest speakers, we've even had uh, football players, uh, Chicago Bears players come and speak to our students, all kinds, regarding relevant topics. Uh, chapel is a graded um, one hour. Students participate in 22 chapels um, uh, through each semester. Uh, in addition to RISE courses, there are students declare a concentration and they choose one traditional course in each semester uh, for audit. So there are six categories of courses that they may uh, choose from. Business and entrepreneurship, Christian ministries, Creative Arts, which has three tracks, visual, vocal, or instrumental, uh, education, health and wellness, math and technology. Accommodations for each student will be made, and a letter of accommodation is given to each of the uh, traditional professors with the assistance of a learning advisor that accompanies each of our students in the traditional course. Uh, we want to be sure that our students are um, having a successful student uh, experience integrating into that traditional classroom. A separate syllabus may be created on an exception basis as needed. And in the student's first year of the semester, they take courses that identify their interests and abil abilities, creating a person-centered plan. The person-centered plan, and Drew, you can move that to the next slide, I think there. There we go. The person-centered plan is updated as students develop more skills and it reflects any of their new preferences as they discover more about themselves. This is very customized and includes the student set goals because we want students to set goals as they buy into that. We want to lead them to be self-determining. With the uh, customized plan, Campus internships then are matched to their interests, abilities, and career goals. And again, I mentioned the, we start out with on-campus internships in their second semester and then move to off-campus internships for the third and fourth uh, semester. As previously shared, we utilize Uber in transporting our students back and forth to their internships. I think a very unique part of our program is the key supports that we offer to the students through our traditional students as advisors. We have a staff of five uh, RISE staff and our advisors are our student advisors. They are all vetted, background checked, and trained. That relationship building between the traditional students and the RISE students has proven to be very successful. They are a very uh, valuable line of communication with the students and with our RISE staff. There are three types of advisors. Uh, the RISE resident advisor lives in the campus uh, dorms along with our students. They will either share a suite 
uh, with two students or live just across the hall. They help engage students uh, navigating college life. They help build community by planning activities multiple times each month, helping them to fully integrate in what it is to live on a college campus. Our RISE Learning Advisors uh, accompany our students to their traditional classes. They insist in tutoring, they're note takers, and they um, help in the study time. They also are very valuable in communicating struggles that they observe with the students in the classroom. That helps us to adjust their accommodations and make sure that they're having a successful experience in their traditional courses. We also build library sessions in to the schedule two times a week, and we have specific learning advisors helping them through their homework in those library sessions. Our final group is the RISE Vocational Advisors. These students help students learn their job duties. They help facilitate communication with their internship supervisor. They also help to encourage independence on the job so that eventually the RISE advisor involvement decreases. We want to see them be successful in that way. As a note, all fees for advisors are included in the tradition of, uh, in the tuition of the program. And with the tuition, we did set up um, recently the new tu tuition for the 2021 school year um, for room board and all student fees. It is $26,060 for the full school year. Because we are a comprehensive transition program, students will qualify for the Pell Grant, which is a federal grant. And if they live in the state of Illinois, the MAP grant uh, based on meeting the requirements of those grants. Through the great generosity of partners to the RISE program, we also offer endowments and private foundations. If you look on our website, we'd be able to um, provide additional information on that and you're welcome to contact me as well. Um, there are also grant opportunities and scholarships from third parties as well. RISE students are indeed Judson students. You can see a picture of our students uh, preparing for homecoming. Um, many of the events that are sponsored by our Judson student organization, or we call them JSO. That includes bowling items, theme nights, movie nights, hangout times. The relationship between RISE students and Judson students um, is so heartwarming. They really, really develop a very close uh, bond and that exists outside of after they graduate um, they are still connecting with each other and they build those lifelong friendships as um, other schools have indicated I think Kira spoke about um, the safe environment Judson University is a very safe environment we were recently named the third safest campus in the United States by universities.com our RISE staff also you know, utilizes life 360 an app that allows us to determine the location of all our students. I'd like to now point out um, and showcase two RISE students who have graduated from our program. Uh, Daniel is featured in this. Daniel's interests and talents include drawing and playing the piano, so very creative young man. He declared uh, creative arts as his concentration and took drawing courses with the traditional students. Through great work with his professor, his learning advisor, and the students in the class, he was able to really sharpen those drawing skills. In addition, he played on Judson's Piano Ensemble. He performed with the Music Symposium at Wheaton College and was mentored by internationally known pianist and Judson alum, Huntley Brown. He also had the opportunity for a one-day experience with Ox Creative, a partner with us uh, who's a graphic design company. Recently, he sold his first commissioned artwork, which has featured the tiger here in the slide. So that's Daniel. I'd also like to then feature Alexis. Alexis' interests and talents include cheerleading, gymnastics, and sports. She participated in the cheer squad at Judson University, as well as our Special Olympics basketball team. Her concentration was in education, and so in addition to her RISE courses, she took courses in special education introductions and methods courses. 
Alexis also participated in our uh, year three pilot program. And through that, she received a paid internship at Sherman Hospital, a very large hospital here in Elgin, where she was able to hone in specifically on her skills and um, worked in the hospital cafeteria. Through her experiences in the RISE program, she was able to build a strong resume, um, furthered her goals uh, for independent living. As I shared before, our students set their own goals and we work through our, our students to make sure those goals are accomplished. And an, a job opportunity in her hometown has opened up um, a hospital nearby. Well, this concludes my presentation on the RISE program. Uh, for additional information, uh, Drew will uh, put out contact information. I welcome you uh, to contact me uh, regarding any specific questions that you have. Thank you so much for your participation in this college fair. Thank you, Janine. All right, we are going to move on to Shepherd's College. This time it is for real. And so Eric, if you would um, go ahead and whenever you are ready. Awesome, thank you. So yeah, my name is Eric Lindsay. I'm the Director of Student Recruitment here at Shepherd's College. And so Shepherd's College, we are a three-year post-secondary education program um, specifically for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So um, one difference um, from us from the others is that we are our own college. We're not attached to a larger university. So we are just Shepherd's College. We're located in Union Grove, Wisconsin. If you're wondering where that is, we're straight west of Racine. That's a more populated area people tend to know. Um, otherwise, 45 minutes south, about an hour north of Chicago, right off I-94. And so, yeah, if we could go to the next slide here, I'll just run us through our mission statement. So we ultimately exist to educate and train students with intellectual and developmental disabilities to help them reach appropriate independence through the development of vocational, social, and life skills while inspiring a lasting awareness of God's plan for their lives. So you'll notice there's that word in there that says appropriate independence, and that's our trademark. And so on the next slide, I'll go over that with you. And so the definition of that, it's up here, but ultimately what it means is that independence is gonna look different for each student that we get. And so we try to individualize our program as much as we can to meet students where they're at and get them to where they need to be. So in 2008, we started with um, five students and now after 10 years, we have 95 students um, continuing to grow and now accepting cohorts of 36 students each year total. Um, but appropriate independence here, it has four principles to it. And this, this philosophy underlies everything and anything that we do as a program. And so we want our students to know that they are designed on and for a purpose. They will take a class to learn more about their skill sets and their abilities. Individuals for community, um, they'll take classes on that as well. And we also do a lot of outings and engagements within our community, um, trained for life. So although we are a three-year program, we do have an alumni program and a placement specialist who works with our graduates. And ultimately throughout the three years they're with us, we are training them for the rest of their lives through the skills that they're going to learn with us. And the last one I love, empowered to serve. Um, our students learn a lot about service, serving each other, serving their community, um, and so on and so forth. And so within our program, we have three different vocational majors, and then we also have core classes. So first I'll run through our three vocational majors. The first one is culinary arts. And so on our campus, we have a production bakery, a commercial kitchen, and then just down the road from our campus, we have a coffee shop. And so students get training in all of these areas. And so some jobs that a student might get by doing our culinary arts program, um, they're listed on the side there. Um, so food service assistant, dietary aid, deli assistant, kitchen porter, line prep cook, um, and so on with that. The next one is horticulture. So on our campus, we have a greenhouse. We also have a lot of land as well. And so our students work in areas such as community supported agriculture, greenhouse production, landscape maintenance, and garden and floral retail. And then our third major is technology. So we have a tech center on campus where students learn in the areas such as professional office skills, web development, IT maintenance, and IT repair, and mass media production. And so we'll go to the next slide here. I'll kind of rope all this together. So we have our vocational classes, and then we have what we call our core academics, or what I would just consider our life skills classes. Um, a list of a few of them are right here. There's a, there's a little bit more than that, but ultimately 
students come in as first years and they will be taking a lot of life skills courses and they'll also do an intro into all three of our majors just to kind of figure out which one's gonna be the best fit for them. So when they go home for winter break in their first year, they will come back and have declared their major and begin in their first year um, of their major specific courses as they continue more of our core academic classes. In their second year, they will spend about half the amount of time in the next level of some of our core classes and the other half will be spent in their major specific course. Now their third year looks the most different. Um, Monday through Thursday, they do internships on campus or off campus, and they'll spend over 700 hours of internships their third year. Friday is when they do their third year classes. And so that's kind of how our core academics and vocational majors kind of overlapped. As they go over through the program, they'll be immersed more and more into vocational and occupational training. And so the next slide here, we are a fully residential program. And so not with not being attached to a large university, we are a 24 seven staffed program. So we have three different areas that students live in. It's a progression. And so they start in the dorms, then they'll go to the homes or the halls, and then they'll go to the Clark apartments. So the dorms are the most structured and supported area of living. We'll have anywhere from 14 to 25 students living in the dorms. They share a large kitchen, a large common space, a community style restroom. Um, there are a few personal restrooms in the areas as well. And then they will go to the halls where now they have um, eight to their own hall, but there's two kitchens in each hall. And so they'll split four and four where now the independence and responsibility has increased. And then their third year, they will be in a Clark apartment right on our campus as well, where they are with um, one roommate. So two students to an apartment. It's a one bed, one bath apartment. Um, so yeah, and as they go through these three, in the dorms and the halls, we have staff that sleep overnight every day of the week. Um, and that's just to ensure an extra level of safety for our students. Now the Clark apartments, due to the nature of an apartment, we don't have a staff that sleeps overnight. Um, but they do have an emergency phone number to call in case they would need to reach anyone. And so as part of student life, as part of living on campus, um, we also do, we'll go to the next slide here, sports. Uh, we do Special Olympics of Wisconsin. So we do basketball, bowling, volleyball, soccer, and track and field. Um, we are going to add flag football, and that was supposed to happen this coming August, but um, of course, due to what's going on, um, probably not gonna happen this year, but as things get back to normal in the future, um, that will be one of our additional sports. So students can play as many sports as they want. We usually have about five basketball teams and three soccer teams. And I think over 80%, if not more than that, of our students are involved with at least one of our sports. Um, what's not listed on this is our clubs as well. So we have clubs that take place throughout the week that students can get involved in on top of sports. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. Outings and service projects. And so as we talked about, you know, our students being empowered to serve, um, they'll go out and do service projects throughout the year. In this photo here, they went to Feed My Starving Children in Libertyville, Illinois. If you've never been there, it's where you go and you package food to help those in need overseas. And it's a great opportunity for students to pack boxes and in the end see a number of how many um, individuals that they serve overseas. But we'll do a bunch of other stuff like that. And then outings as well. So especially on Friday evenings and Saturdays, those are our very um, activity driven days where we're getting students off campus. Um, and that's kind of the goal. We train students on campus. Then when we can get off, we want to get off and go out and be involved in the community. Um, so we'll go to the next slide here. Accreditation. So Shepherds College is a fully accredited college program and we're accredited through the Council on Occupational Education. And so what that means for students is that when they go through Shepherds College and they pick that major that they want to do, they are receiving a certificate in that major that is a fully accredited certificate through the Council on Occupational Education. That certificate qualifies them for a job in that specific field. Um, I don't have a slide on it, but as far as our placement outcomes go, we are required to report to our creditor a year and a half after a student graduates, whether they've received a job at, at gainful employment, which is minimum wage or higher. We are required to meet 70% or more of each cohort of each major getting a job in their field. So not only is it the benefit of your student getting an accredited certification in one of our three vocations, 
Um, we're also committed as a program through our accreditor to help our students find gainful employment after they graduate. Another thing that our accreditation does is it opens up the door for full FAFSA. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, I'll kind of walk through all of our steps here. Um, but FAFSA is one of the steps here, and it, it's um, grants, loans, and federal work studies. So this is full loans, parent plus, um, subsidized, unsubsidized loans, things like that. Um, and then some of these other steps here are other ways that students have um, paid for the program. And our updated cost for this year, this coming year, is 48700 a year. And that includes room and board, tuition, and student support. And so within that, we give a, um, I'll start from the bottom, students can use their social security income to go towards room and board. So they can use FAFSA, which I mentioned. We give internal scholarships to students every year based on need. And I know that since 2008, Shepherds College has given um, over $4.5 million in scholarships. So um, we understand the financial burden. And as we work with families, we do our very best um, to take all of these steps into consideration and work with our students to make college a reality. And then also external scholarships are listed on here as well. And then state agencies and programs. So depending on what state you're in, um, I know we're in Wisconsin, if you're in Wisconsin, different things like DVR, IRS or family care, different managed care organizations. Um, and we've had luck with other funding sources in other states as well. So if you have any questions about those, um, please feel free to reach out to me and glad to connect. So next slide. Um, a way to explore Shepherds. So if you want to jump back on Zoom in two days from now, we would love to connect with you. Um, we have two virtual preview days coming up, June 11th and then June 18th at 5.30 p.m. If you're interested in this, just shoot an email to info at shepherdscollege.com edu to register and um, we'll be happy to send that information to you so I know this was a very brief kind of bird's eye view of our program there's a lot of stuff in here that I didn't talk about and I would love for you to know more about so um, if you can't make either of those days shoot me an email I'd be glad to um, connect with you through phone um, and share more about our program with you I see some questions coming up about placement I think since we're gonna jump in here to um, a Q&A with all of us or it seems like some are replying but for Shepherds College, um, for graduates from about 2008 to um, 2018, we ran a, a report and over 90% of those graduates have found a job at minimum wage or higher. Within the year and a half that we have to report to our accreditor, we usually fall in the mid 80% or so across all three majors. So between around 85% or so for you know both culinary, port, and tech. Um, this past year, we did fall under for horticulture just a little bit, but we had some unique scenarios um, with students moving to new locations or taking care of um, grandparents and, and things like that that kind of uh, messed with the numbers a little bit. But if, if you have more questions about that, I'd be glad to share more with you. Um, and yeah, the tuition for us, 48700 that includes room and board, um, tuition, and student support as well. So being a that's with being a 24 seven staffed area with the overnight staff and all that all kind of plays a role in that. So yeah, three year program located in Union Grove, Wisconsin. Have any questions, feel free to reach out. <clears throat> awesome, thank you, Eric. Uh, we are going to move into a time of a Q and A with all of our panel members. And so um, we, we're in a little bit of a unique situation here in this college fair because we have a lot of um, uh, high school educators, people that are involved with uh, transitioning students out of high school into college life who are um, attending today. We have some parents. We probably have some students on as well. And so uh, people who are, are caretakers for those um, who are looking to pursue their next steps in their career. And so we might have a variety of different questions. Um, we don't have too much uh, time. We don't have all, all night to answer all of your questions. And so um, on the screen, we do have everybody's contact information um, for the speakers uh, tonight. And so if you have any specific questions uh, that are directed directly toward a particular program or you want to follow up with any of that, um, you can contact any of us directly and we'll be able to answer those questions for you. Um, and so if you have a, a question, um, I think the, the easiest way is to go through the chat. I don't know um, how we're going to uh, see if somebody has a question and wants to ask it verbally. Um, and so 
what I think we'll do is, is we can go through the chat. If you have a question, you can put it there. Um, I'll go ahead and just start us off with some questions that people have uh, asked before the presentations and we'll see uh, where we go. And so I'll ask the question, any of the presentation uh, presenters can go ahead and, and chime in. Uh, but we are, you know, we're in this, uh, this season where we have to be doing some things virtually. And so we're, we're doing this virtual college fair. I know um, uh, Eric was saying that he has virtual preview days coming up. Uh, and so what opportunities uh, are there for families to reach out and get more information about your programs um, that may not be uh, a huge preview day event or different events, uh, the college fairs or other things like that? What are some things that you're planning um, to, to help uh, families get more information about your programs? Tim Albert here from Elsa, how are you? Um, we're, we're doing individual appointments now, so we do virtual appointments, we can do phone calls, um, and like I mentioned in my presentation, we are doing um, two people at a time campus visits, though we're not getting inside too many buildings. Um, and I should say, uh, uh, Elmhurst College does have ADA compliant rooms, so we do have students who happen to be in wheelchairs who live on campus and, and attend the college. Great, thank you, Tim. Yep. Any, any others? Yep, Drew, I wasn't, well, yes, I'm certainly answer that question. I wasn't sure if uh, Kira was still able on the line. We're getting quite a few in the chats for Bethesda, but um, I, what Tim mentioned, right, we're living in a virtual world right now, and so we're certainly offering a one-on-one. -on -one. We do have a college panel with some of our alumni that are going to be attending next week. And so we have really whatever environment that you'd be comfortable with, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation or being able to meet some of our alumni and have your questions asked. And so we also have a college summer experience program that's coming up in August for individuals that are preparing themselves to go to college, whether this year or the next couple of years really giving them a chance to get a taste of what's going to be what's going to be required for them to go to college. So we've got a lot of options for our families. Uh, Eric here He's with Shepherds. Yep, you hear Kara? Oh. oh, sorry. Go, go ahead, Eric. I was with Shepherds College here, um, I mentioned the two virtual preview days. That'd be a great way to, to connect with us. Um, through Zoom again. And then also, we are still accepting applicants for the next year. What we used to do for our admissions process was that students would complete an overnight visit. Uh, we're not doing that now. So what we're asking is that students fill out our full application and then we're doing um, a few different interview processes through Zoom. Um, and then also just scheduling phone calls and such with families. Um, we do plan to open in the fall and our leadership team continues to meet um, to strategically plan how we do that effectively. Um, given the safety of our students. So um, we don't have any information to give out yet quite on that subject, um, but hopefully in the next couple of weeks we will. Um, but at least for now, just um, through Zoom and phone call and doing what we can with that and Google Classroom as well. And I'll go ahead and answer the next question I saw. Um, we are a certificate program at Elmhurst College. I think all of us are. Um, but we do have a potential pathway towards a degree program, but not all of my students pursue that. Um, so it's, you know, Elmhurst College is a degree institution um, and our students have opportunities to take college classes for non-credit, but certain students who are able to uh, keep up with the work can do four credits, and so it's a possibility. Yeah, so that was, that was one of the next questions is, um, do any of the other programs have opportunities for students to pursue, uh, you know, college credit um, on the, the traditional side? Um, I know Shepherds was saying that they, they have a, they're fully accredited for a certificate program. Um, for us at the RISE program, I know that we uh, do not currently offer opportunities for students to take college credit um, within our program specifically. Um, for, for our school, a uh, student that would be able to qualify to take um, classes for credit would then be within the traditional program. And so our students are those that would not be able to uh, qualify to participate in that traditional program. Drew, to, uh, so for Pace to answer that question, and so very similar to Drew, what you shared. So our students are typically individuals that would have difficulty navigating um, towards a college degree. 
And so if students were looking for something that led to a college degree, um, they'd be encouraged to look at our Pathways program, which allows students to um, go towards a college degree, but perhaps with additional experience, like additional support, like a learning specialist in the classroom with them, but our student doesn't typically apply for that. Great. Yeah, and with Shepherds College, just to clarify, <clears throat> it can get kind of confusing. The best analogy I can think of is that it's similar to a trade school where you go to get a certification in one of our sp specific vocations um, that we offer. So like for culinary arts, we would use the Culinary Institute of America's curriculum, but we're going to modify it for our students. And then it's still fully accredited through um, COE that I mentioned. As far as we, we are hoping to add an associates program in the future in applied technology. Um, we've had students come through who have strong skill sets in that area um, that with proper supports in place um, could achieve an associate. So that is something that's on our radar um, for the future. But for now, it's just the, um, the accredited certification, the three majors that we offer. Great. And so we had a question come in uh, specifically for the RISE program asking about are most of the students from the local area? Uh, Janine answered that by saying a lot of our students are, but we have had students from out of state, um, whether it's from Michigan or um, California. We've had prospects, uh, prospective students from Arizona and Seattle all across the nation. Um, for the other programs, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your, your demographics of the students? Are they primarily within the Midwest? Are they outside of there? Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the group of students you have in your programs. Also, it's primarily regional as well. A lot of people from around the area in Northern Illinois, but we've had students from various other states and even an international student in the last couple of years. So we're open to, to people from across the country. Yep, Pace uh, at National Lewis is very similar in that our students are focused within the Midwest area. However, we have students that are with us that are international. Um, they don't pay extra or out-of-state tuition, so the tuition that we offer is the tuition regardless of where they live. Um, and so we are beginning to see um, students coming as far as, um, from Texas and Indiana, um, and again, the Midwest area, but we're really open to students wherever that they're living. Yeah, and at, <clears throat> at Shepherds College, since 2008, we've had students from 32 states and eight different countries. So. Um, we're hoping to hit all 50 one day, so we're working on that. Um, but majority, probably 70% are all from um, the Midwest, predominantly Wisconsin and Illinois, um, out of those. Um, and then, yeah, with the tuition question, it's the same, um, same across the board, regardless of where you're from. Yeah, and I can speak to the RISE program as well. The tuition cost is the same uh, for all of our students, regardless of where, what state that they're, they're from there. Um, this was a, a question that um, came up in some of the earlier conversations and it looks like it's coming uh, through right now as well. Uh, but um, should students who are attending uh, your programs, would you recommend that they go through a full transition program before coming or um, come straight out of, of high school? What, what type of uh, thing would you recommend for students looking at your program? We uh, don't have a, a pre-college program or a, like a weekend program at ELSA at this time. It's something we've kind of wanted to do or talk about, but haven't gotten to. In terms of students coming to us, you know, we always, we take students between 18 and 28. We're fans of students who do transition. We don't require it, but we see a lot of value for students who do at least some, if not all. Of course, it's going to matter the most what works best for your student because everybody's kind of unique in that. Um, so it's always worth having a conversation with myself or any of us or any of these programs to see, you know, if it's gonna be about fit in the end. And if you're ready for it now, awesome. If another year or two of, of getting some job skills or independent skills of transition, that's great too. Yeah, and at Shepherds, um, similar to what Tim said, there's no right or wrong with that. Um, we at Shepherds, we don't have an age cap. Um, most of our students are in their younger 20s because of transition. Um, but we also have a handful who come when they're 18, right after graduating their senior year, and they're, they're ready to rock and roll with us, and they've done great. So it just kind of depends on where the student's at. Um, but specifically for Shepherds, we don't have an age cap. 
um, by any means. Great, and now I know that um, uh, Tim was saying that they don't have a, a pre-college program or a weekend experience. Us at the RISE program, we don't have that either. Um, we are looking into some opportunities to have some type of uh, college um, readiness experience or, or some type of uh, experience Judson uh, RISE program event. Um, that is something that I do know uh, Kira is not here, but uh, at Bethesda, they do have um, an opportunity for that. So I would encourage any of you to uh, go to Bethesda's website or contact Kira directly um, to talk about their experience. But are there any others that um, presenters that may have some, some experiences or, or uh, college ready uh, programs before they would come to their uh, university? For Shepherds, I mentioned part of our admissions process is doing an overnight visit. Um, now, when things are back to normal, we're going to jump back to that, and they would come during the school year for a couple days, but um, instead of that, they could also do our summer program. We call it college for a week, but it's about four days long, simulated college experience for prospective students. Um, last year, we had about 45 new students on campus coming to, coming to check it out. Um, then that's a great opportunity if a student is a junior going into their senior year, that, that summer in between, this would be the earliest opportunity that a student could complete their overnight visit at Shepherds College. So it's our way of um, helping students to get in the door as early as possible. So at Pace, we don't have a pre-college program. We do, as I mentioned earlier, offer a summer college experience. Um, what's unique about that is students can participate that in that as young as 16. It's not residential, so they go home. Um, but at 16, they can begin to take a look at what's needed, what are the skills that they already have, perhaps what are the things they need to be able to focus on as they're preparing for college, um, and, and what would be offered in the future. So it's an absolutely a taste of what PACE would offer, and they can start it as early as 16. It's a small program. We limit it to only 10 students to be able to keep the experience intimate um, and it's a Monday through Thursday opportunity and and every summer in August. That's great. Elizabeth, uh, how would somebody find more information about that specifically? Yep, so they could reach out to me so that way I can answer any of their questions about logistics and hours, but if they were interested they can email me directly and I can get that information to them. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we did have a question about uh, graduation rates. And so can some of you speak on um, uh, the progression of your students and, and how um, their, your graduation, graduation rate or retention of your students um, works through your program as well? For us, we're looking at typically 70%. Um, it, sometimes it's higher, some years, some, you know, it varies. We're all pretty small, I, I would say. It's probably across the board. Um, we average 15 students come in, you know, so and typically 10 to 12, sometimes all 15 graduate. Um, being a four-year program, it's a long road. Um, so, uh, and retention tends to be one of our focuses. But being an intimate program and being small, it affords us to uh, individualize our attention for each of our students. At Shepherds, the graduation rate every year is around the mid 80 percentage or so. Yeah, for the RISE program, we, uh, we are a fairly new program. We're in our, um, going into our fourth year. Uh, and so we uh, have had uh, some students come in that haven't finished the program, some students that uh, were uh, taking a little bit longer. Um, or needed to step away from the program. And so our graduation rate is um, at about 75 or 80% um, right now within our program as well. Drew, can I go ahead and tackle that next question there? Absolutely. Uh, so uh, I love talking to high school educators, you know, and I, I totally get where you're coming from. Um, you know, the way I answer that question is to talk about the college experience. You know, for us, it's a four year college experience. It's very, much like and most of my students if you meet them will tell you that it's like being an Elmhurst College student. Um, there's a lot of growth and learning and development and a lot of abstracts that are hard to put a price tag on that, that occur over that time and I, I think all of my, my colleagues could probably agree that they see those kinds of things in their programs as well. Um, 
for us, you know, when you want to look at return on investment, you know, what's the ROI? Then for us, it's really talking about the, the job piece. And so we take that really seriously in our placements. Um, I mentioned earlier in the chat that we average around 90%. So we want to see our students working and hopefully working in something that suits them. We're always looking for something that that it matches the student's interest the best we can. We may you know, foster that a little bit based on what we, we think their skills are, um, but they're also their interest drives that. And so we're hoping that, to see our students in a successful, preferably full-time employment if we can help it. Um, we work really, really hard to see that most of our students are placed um, you know, shortly after they graduate and we continue to work with them for, for, well, really, they can always come back and work with us. We have uh, alumni sessions and so on throughout the school year for all of our alum, but our current grads are always sort of a priority for the first year once they're out until everybody's placed as best we can do. So that's kind of where I, you know, I talk about, you know, what kind of future your students have. Parents aren't going to be here forever, unfortunately. So, you know, the more independence they have, the better able they have to take care of themselves. That's kind of where, where I like to talk about the value of the program and why it's worth it. Yeah, I'll state the question again for the, the people watching this on the recording or if they don't see the chats. Uh, but the question is, how, how do you get um, the, the parents and the families to, to buy into these types of programs where it's not necessarily getting a degree, um, but it's, it's more developing their independent living and their vocational skills? If anybody else wants to speak into that, I think Tim did a really good explanation. That's kind of how we go about it at RISE is, you know, these are, we're developing those skills to help them live independently, especially um, without your help, because one day you, uh, they will need to be living out independently in the world. Yeah, at Shepherds College, one of my recommendations, and I know right now it's not a possibility, but if you can, get on campus um, to these places and, and check it out in person. Um, it can be really hard to hear about it from a distance, but once you walk it, you meet the staff, you see the students, um, as a parent and even as educators, you can you can tell um, how your student or how your child is going to fit in based by walking around the campus and feeling the environment. And I know for us, um, that's a very important thing that we value is getting on to campus um, for sure. So, and everything else that, that Tim said, I, I would agree with um, as far as the return on investment goes, we're all very dedicated to helping students, not only for the time they're going to be at the program, but for the rest of their life. I know at Shepherds, as I mentioned, part of appropriate independence is being um, trained for life as well. And so at least with our program, we try, like I said, to individualize it as much as we can. Um, we have 95 students total and our ratio on campus is typically um, one staff to eight students the majority of the time, but outside of the staff that work directly with students, um, we have over 100 staff members. So our numbers are pretty, pretty low for staff to students. So we try the best we can, but if you can really, um, once things get back up and running, um, jump into the other opportunities going on and definitely get on campus once once that's possible for the programs who aren't quite there yet. And Drew, thanks for reading the question out. I keep forgetting to do that. I always that's forget right. the recording doesn't see the chat. So that's somebody right. else asked, what's the average number of years for students to complete my the program? And then someone asked specifically of my program, what is the earned degree or certificate? And so my program's four, uh, Shepherds and Pace are three, and RISE is two, the thesis is two, I believe two, if I remember right, or she three, I forget. Um, we do a certificate program to complete ELSA. We have some opportunities to perhaps connect to four credit classes and pursue a degree that could go longer. I have part-time students that occasionally go a little more than four years, um, but it doesn't happen terribly often with us. Most of our students finish in four. Yeah, and so at RISE, we, do, we are a two-year uh, for our certificate program, we are currently in a pilot phase for a third year, which is an extra step of independence for us. Um, that is outside of our certificate program. And so the, the actual certificate program is two years, and then we have that additional pilot that we're hoping um, within the next year we can incorporate into our um, full certificate program. Yep, at PACE, um, our program is three-year certificate program, and they completed in three years. Now, if we have students that are need additional support, they're not quite ready to live on their own or live independently. In PACE Ahead, they're able to stay with us up to two additional years, um, receiving uh, independent living skills as well as a job coach and all of the other experience. Um, 
in the pace ahead. However, they would have completed the certificate program prior to. So it's three years in the certificate program. And if they'd like to participate in the um, pace ahead, um, they can stay with us for two additional years. Great, there was an additional question for you, Elizabeth. Um, what's the cost for the, the summer experience? Uh -huh. The summer experience program, which is um, in August is $400. All right, I think that's all of the questions we had in the, the chat here. Yep. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think we can, this was a, a great experience. We appreciate everybody taking the time out of their uh, Tuesday evening to, to spend with us and learn about our programs. Uh, if you have any questions about our programs um, specifically or uh, just about the, the process of uh, applying or helping you get through um, you know, the next steps for your, your uh, student, all of our programs, we work uh, really well collaboratively. And we know that we, have, we offer different programs. We're very similar, but we all have our own nuances. And so we really do partner with each other to make sure that we find the right fit for you and your student. And so um, we'd love to continue the conversations. You can feel free to reach out to any of the presenters um, and uh, get more information about each of their programs. And so. Uh, we thank you so much for participating and for um, being a part of our virtual college fair. We hope to have uh, a few more opportunities uh, for you to learn some more information about our programs.